right, in this video, this is the matrix preset that you can find in my free wallpapers folder. You can easily add even more dropping matrices. And I also have a template for you to look at as well. Now I made the matrix template in Affinity Designer. And basically what this thing is is a white PNG and we have letters cut out of it. And to show that to you, I have this uh, rectangle here. And if I drag this rectangle around, we can see that we do have letters. And actually what's happening here is we have just a white rectangle. And then what I've done is I've taken some text, some random text, and I've applied an erase filter in Affinity Designer. By us doing that, the text will erase this white rectangle and we can show stuff that's in the background. For example, this red rectangle here. Feel free to pick this up from my custom shared folder, Matrix Stuff. I have both the template for Affinity Designer and the PNG file. And again, that PNG is really just a white image with the text cut out of it. Now, how did I generate my random text? I went to www.dave-read.com, uh, random letter sequence generator, and you can just basically type in whatever characters you want. You can tell it uh, how many strings to create, and I had it create, what, I think 10,000 or something like that of these characters. When I did copy and paste that into Affinity Designer, I did have to adjust some of the text. For example, I made the font a monospace font, such as Courier. And for the actual characters, I gave them some tracking adjustments as well as some spacing between each line. But by using a monospace font, such as Courier or any other monospace font, you can create these columns here where you're going to have uh, perfectly lined up numbers, letters, characters, or whatever. So what I want to do in this tutorial is I want to show you how you can take this preset, look for it in my free wallpapers folder. It will be called the matrix or matrix or something like that. And I want to show you how we can fill this up with more falling characters. So in this preset, if we head over to globals, it's not global heavy. We could make this very global heavy, but I chose not to. I have the matrix image. I have the main color. And then I have some other colors. And these other colors are the colors that we apply here. Now, if I change the main color, let's say somewhere around a gray, this may not look as appealing, but basically what it's doing is, is it's changing the background color. Notice I have main color applied there. And also inside of the items for the image, that's that global image, the matrix PNG. I have the colorize filter applied and I have that color set to main color. I'm going to go back and change that to a black. But I do want you to know that option is there if you wanted to change that main color. And then you could come down here and adjust these colors as well. But all these other colors are simply going to be the ones that we can apply to these dropping pieces in our matrix. Now to give you an idea of what these things are, OC1A is other color one and this is the first instance I did of the other color one and that is going to be this rectangle over here on the left hand side. One thing to point out, I did have to adjust this image, this matrix image. I had to give it a width of 753 on my Galaxy Note 8. That allowed that PNG to fill the entire screen. But I did find that these rectangles having a width of 20 for the way I have it set up, it works just fine. You can give it random heights and if we go to the position for this rectangle, I have it in the top left and I have the Y offset set to match that of the height of that rectangle. That is important. Now for the paint, I have the initial paint color set to the main color, which is the black that we have right now. And then for FX, I have a vertical gradient and I'm applying the other color one since I'm in my other color one A rectangle. This allows it to have that fade look. If you look at how these things are falling, we do have the color coming in and then it fades out for all of these. But basically that same setup applies to all of the rectangles. Let me just come to other color 4A and that's going to be this one that you see highlighted here. I still have the width of 20, but I have this height set to 640. So what I've done with this one is I did adjust the Y offset to negative 640. Again, make sure those two match up. 
of course this one's positive and this one here is negative and then you can adjust the x offset to you know move it around you know do you want to move it over here do you want to move it over here wherever you want to put it that's entirely up to you now you may need to do some fine tuning to get those rectangles to line up perfectly so that you're not seeing other columns of the matrix and then for every single rectangle i have an animation with a scroll applied i have it set to loop straight and then the duration completely random the speed on my device somewhere around 300 allowed all of these rectangles to fall off the screen and then just basically loop back around and begin again and then you also want to make sure that you have the angle set to 90 that's going to allow it to drop down so with all that said let's go ahead and fill this up with some more dropping numbers but really we just have a drop in rectangle so this other color 1b that's this one following very fast right here. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to copy and paste it. So now that we've copied and pasted, you can see this blue rectangle with the fading gradient. That fading gradient matches that of the main color perfectly. Now the reason why we see the rectangle is because we need to drop it behind the image. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to rename this OC1C other color 1c this is like my third one that i'm applying with this blue rectangle all right so for this oc 1c i'm going to make this one longer or taller rather i'm going to adjust its position i'm going to push this over to the right some more and you can see me pushing it over to the right just want to make sure i'm not going to overlap with some other matrices and again remember since i did make this one taller 650 i want to adjust its position to negative 650 that's going to allow that rectangle to drop perfectly from the top and then you know here it does pretty much go all the way off if you make them too tall you may have to come into your animation and adjust that speed a little bit more but uh, like I said I I'm going to keep it at 300 for all of them but since I'm inside of this animation maybe I want this one to fall a little bit slower so I'm going to bump the duration up something totally random I'm going to do 6.8 why not now the only thing I would do here is probably zoom in on that and notice here if I zoom in we are actually overlapping two columns in the matrix so it would be a good idea here to come back and adjust that position maybe slide it over to the left some and we can save this apply it to the home screen and that's that new one right there so what I'm going to quickly do, I'm just going to fast forward through this. I want to apply those same concepts and I'm going to apply four more of these rectangles. And then once we do that with the random lengths, the random durations of our animations, we'll have a pretty full matrix here. And uh, yeah, there you have it. You know, go back to that spot there where I fast forward it, slow it down if you need some help with moving those things around. But basically I did the same thing as I did with those, uh, that first example I showed you where I moved it around, adjusted its size, the height of that rectangle, adjusted the Y offset. Then I went in and adjusted the duration of the animation, slid it left or slid it right. And um, yeah, add some more of these to fill up the entire screen. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and that's it for this video. I hope it helped.